every time I review a Linux laptop on this channel, I get the same comment. Where are the affordable options? And of course, affordable doesn't mean the same thing to everyone. But in this case, we have sub 500 euros laptops if you don't have to pay VAT. And if you have to pay that, it's still sub 550 euros, which I would say is pretty much as low as you can get if you want something of reasonable quality if you're buying new. So these are the Slimbook Elemental laptops and they are designed to give you a device that is perfectly Linux compatible at a decent price and as we will see without skimping on the build quality or the specs. So let's see what you're getting for this kind of money and let's also see which sponsor you're getting in this video. This video is sponsored by Thunderbird. Most of you probably know about it, but for those who don't, it's an all-in-one suite that handles email, calendar, contacts, tasks, RSS feeds, and chats. Thunderbird recently received a giant update with a full redesign of the app that makes it easier than ever to set up your accounts and to be productive. The interface is very customizable with multiple choices for interface density, view modes, panels, and the ability to place any button you need in the top bar. After this update, Thunderbird is now my email and calendar client of choice. Also, it's fully open source, it's free of charge, and it's available for any Linux distribution, Windows, and Mac OS. So whether you used Thunderbird in the past or not, click the link in the description below and give the new release a try. You will not regret it. So first, what are the specs for these affordable Linux laptops? So the Slimbook Elemental comes in two variants, a 14 inch and a 15.6 inch. They are both matte black and they share a lot of the same internals. Both come with either an i5-1235U or an i7-1255U. These are 10 core 12th gen Intel CPUs that can go up to 4.4 GHz or 4.7 GHz respectively. Both laptops have a 1080p display, matte with an anti-glare coating. They both offer two non-soldered DDR4 RAM slots running at 3200 MHz and one NVMe SSD slot with PCIe 4. They both use Intel's XE graphics and they are both made mostly out of aluminium. And they both have Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, a 720p webcam and a 49 watt hour battery. You can spec the SSD up to 2 terabytes and the RAM up to 64 gigs, but the devices start with 250 gigs of SSD and 8 gigs of RAM. So they're relatively standard ultrabooks at that price, except you get a full aluminium frame, which is not often the case in this price range. It's generally just plastic that will get worn out on the palm rest and you can't realistically expect a 4k display or a dedicated gpu or whatever latest gen cpu that you would want on a higher price laptop at that price point it's actually pretty decent now both laptops are mostly built out of aluminium the palm rest the sides the bottom plate and the lid the screen bezels and the hinge guards are made out of plastic the end result is something that looks like your average laptop. I can't say that I love this look or that I don't like it. It's your usual black laptop with a tapered profile. It's the Intel MacBook Air inspired design. Now these laptops don't flex much. There is a bit of give in the middle of the keyboard, but that's nothing worrying. It's pretty usual. The hinge feels solid enough, it doesn't wobble too much when typing, and it gives a decent amount of resistance when opening or closing the laptop. Which you can do with just one finger, which is important for people who might not have the full motion range of their two arms or two hands. The branding is the usual for Slimbook with a logo on the lid and another big Slimbook logo under the display, plus all the stickers because you gotta have them stickers I guess. Now, if you do not like all that branding though, you can probably ask them to remove it or replace it with something else. They're generally very open about that. Now, the 14 inch has some kind of little outward notch to host the webcam, which I don't like aesthetically, 
The 15 inch doesn't have it, but apart from that, they look the same. They have recessed keyboards, a tapered profile, the ports are in the same spots, they just look pretty much identical. Except for the power button on the 14 inch, it is on the left side next to a USB port and the audio jack, which is going to be a source of frustration as you will absolutely press it by accident when trying to plug something in. But you can always disable anything from happening when you press that button while the laptop is on to avoid issues. On the 15 inch the button is in a normal spot above the keyboard. All in all, both laptops feel like ultrabooks of that price range with nicer materials. Usually at that price it's all plastic, here you will get a bit more durability in the palm rest area and the lid. I think it's above the build quality or solidity you would expect for a sub 600 euros device. It's not built like a tank, but it is above average. Now let's talk performance. The i5 and i7 U series are low power CPUs. They're made for ultrabooks. They will not blow your socks off, but they are pretty decent. The i7-1255U gets 2529 in single core on Geekbench 6 and 6835 in multi-core, which is very decent. Both review units I got use the i7, but when looking online, the i5-1235U gets around 2150 in single core and 6500 to 7000 in multi-core. So honestly, if you're looking for an affordable device, I would go with the i5. It's probably more than enough for most people's needs. Objectively, whether you go for the i5 or the i7, you're gonna get the same experience for the intended use case of these laptops, which is web browsing, office work, watching videos online or movies or TV shows. They can both handle that very well. I would go for the i5 to save a bit of cash. As per gaming, Shadow of the Tomb Raider just crashed before opening the main menu, so I tried Mechanicus instead, which first is an absolutely perfect game, and second ran at 30 to 35 FPS at 1080p on the i7 model. So you will not be playing AAA titles on any of these Slimbook Elemental laptops, but for indie titles, yes, you're gonna get a decent experience at around 60 FPS, but that's not what these laptops are made for. As per battery life, at mid-brightness running videos in a loop in Firefox over Wi-Fi, I got 5.5 to 6 hours on both, which is okay, but not spectacular for a U-series CPU from Intel. The 49 watt hour battery would probably benefit from being a bit bigger to reach 7 or 8 hours instead for a full all-day use. The ports are a bit different on the 14 inch and the 15 inch. They both have an HDMI port and a USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 port that supports DisplayPort 1.4 and charging. They both have a gigabit Ethernet pop-out jack, they have an audio jack and they have a micro SD card slot. They also both have one USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A port and the 15 inch adds a USB 2 port on top of that and a SIM card module if you want to use 4G or LTE on the laptop. And you also get the usual barrel charger on both, although you don't have to use it because it supports power delivery through USB-C, which is more convenient. As per the display, in both cases it is 1080p at 60Hz with a matte anti-glare coating. They both have sizable bezels, especially at the bottom, and of course the display will look crisper on the 14 inch than on the 15.6 inch. But 1080p is absolutely acceptable for any laptop these days. Like 1440p is too high for 14 inches and higher than that is completely unreasonable for this price range or downright detrimental as you will have to use scaling which will use more resources and more battery life. On both the laptops, the viewing angles are good and the colors are okay, but they are not the best panels you will ever see. The 60Hz refresh rate is perfectly fine here. These laptops don't really have the hardware to run any type of game at higher than that anyway. Nothing disappointing here. It is what you would expect from laptops at that price range. Now, both laptops don't have the same touchpads and keyboards. On the 15 inch, you get a full size keyboard. Here it is using the Spanish layout, but you can have both laptops with just about any layout you prefer. You do get a numpad on the 15 inch, but you don't get one obviously on the 14 inch. 
So on the 15 inch keys are very soft. They are nice and easy to press and very stable, but the actuation feels super smooth. Like the rubber membrane is very thick underneath. The keys do bounce back fast and they don't make much sound. I liked typing on that keyboard and it is backlit with RGB. So you can pick the backlight color through an app like Slimbook RGB. On the 14 inch, the keyboard feels really small. It doesn't go edge to edge and it is kind of cramped and reminiscent of netbook keyboards. The keys are small, especially the arrow keys that have that half height design that I really dislike. It doesn't feel bad to type on it. It is a bit stiffer than the 15 inch, a bit noisier, but it is not bad. The layout just feels very cramped to me. I'm used to typing on a 16 inch laptop, so yeah. This keyboard is also backlit, but with just white as the color. So both have decent keyboards. I personally much prefer the one on the 15 inch, but it's probably because the one on the 14 inch is so cramped and the layout is so packed that it just doesn't feel good to me. I am not used to that. As per the touchpads, they are your usual hinge based design. They don't feel like glass touchpads. They are not ultra smooth, but they do feel precise. They have a nice click. They work well with gestures. They don't wobble or rattle. The one on the 14 inch model feels a bit more rigid with less travel before the click, but they're about on par with a solid PC touchpad for 2023. Now for the webcams, they are just 720p. They are not terrible. They actually perform decently with various lighting conditions, but yeah, they are not MacBook quality. On the 14 inch, you actually get a built-in webcam shutter, so you can hide that webcam if you want. And both laptops have BIOS switches to disable the webcam and the mic if you never use them. The onboard mics are not worth talking about. They're bad, like every laptop mic is. They're tinny, they don't sound good. The speakers on both laptops are okay though. They have some amount of bass, they don't vibrate the chassis, and they're definitely enough to listen to music or to watch YouTube, a movie, or a TV show. So it is the usual fare here, decent enough webcam, really bad mic and solid speakers. It's what you get on virtually every Linux laptop these days. So the Slimbook Elementals, these are solid ultrabooks for the price. Depending on where you live and if you're an individual or a company, you might have to add VAT to the price. But whether you have to pay that or not, I think the Elementals are a good pick. You're not getting an insane deal with incredible specs here, but you get an all-rounder good device that will do whatever you need a sub 500, sub 550 euros to do. You can probably find a cheaper alternative from another manufacturer that only supports Windows. But if you want to support Linux and its development, it is tough to beat the proposition here. And they come with Linux pre-installed since the hardware isn't anything crazy. You know that any distro will run absolutely fine on them. You can open those laptops, repair them and upgrade them. And Slimbook has a downloads category for various guides, drivers for other operating systems, and you can order replacement parts online as well. So yeah, in the world of Linux laptops, these are decently affordable options and they don't skimp on the materials or the quality. You still get good inputs, you get an all aluminium body, you get a decent screen, you're not getting cheated here. So yeah, I can recommend those laptops. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, well, you can always click that dislike button and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you want to support the channel, there are plenty of ways to do so down in the descriptions as well. Do note that patrons and YouTube members will get a daily news podcast from Monday to Friday. So if you're interested in that, uh, well, just click on one of those links uh, in the description. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.